Hello, thank you for joining me on Merlin's Mountain today. I hope the magic rubs off on you. It usually, usually does. In this video, a bit later, we are going to do a pick a card, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I haven't been driving the car in any videos for quite a while, and that is about to change. What happened was, a little while ago, uh, to take the car in for its annual safety check, which we call the MOT in UK, Ministry of Transport uh, test. And uh, for that, you're not allowed to have anything stuck to the windscreen, because they say it will obscure your view. And uh, so I have to take the camera mount off the windscreen every t every year when that happens, you know. Only this time, sadly, the, uh, the sticky stuff on the camera mount it just wasn't sticky enough anymore and it kept falling off. So uh, I bought a new one on eBay. I've just had a, a message through my email to tell me that it's arrived. So we're gonna go and see if it arrives. Then I can stick it to the windscreen and uh, we'll go for a spin because we haven't done that for a while, eh? Well, it looks the right size. So I'm gonna set about this now. Uh, actually, I can't really film it because I need both my hands. Three, two, one, we are back in the car. Here we go. Well, I'm quite liking this one. Um, it's just like much bigger and stronger than the, the last one that I had. And there is no sticky stuff. It's just this massively powerful suction cup. So I hope this one's gonna be staying with me a while, staying with us a while as we uh, get moving. Uh, so it's a little bit odd, a little bit strange, and it likes nothing more than to suddenly fall apart. So I have to sort of do something about that. But right now I've just opened it and uh, we're gonna hit the road. And uh, while we're driving, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the phases of life, really, uh, which I hope I'll have remembered to put in the title by the time you, you're actually seeing this. I've only just thought of it, but that's the way, so you gotta go with the inspiration. And uh, this is the thing, you know, we, we get into phases in our lives and uh, sometimes we kind of feel we're stuck there and there's nothing we can do about it. But uh, I don't know, I'm sure most of you have been through this, actually, and no doubt you will be um, either shouting at the screen or meditatively whispering or something. Yes, but life is change, Andy. It certainly is. Right, about to go out on the main road, so I'd better put my seat belt on. There we go. I mean, that's a phase, you know. I actually remember driving before seat belts were mandatory, before they were compulsory. Uh, that only happened, I think, in 1983. Uh, so there's a, a different phase here on right out onto the road. It's kind of gone back under the rock it came out from largely and it's gone away we've kind of got a different phase now you know people are more used to working from home people are um, I don't know a lot more confident in themselves much of the time although of course it has brought a certain amount of mental illness into the world and uh, made some people's experience of mental illness rather a lot worse and uh, I guess that, that that's one of those things I, I just hope and pray that that will change as time goes on. But phases, you know, that's just, just the way life is. You know, I have a friend who doesn't believe people can ever change and uh, he reckons he's happy. He still lives exactly the way he lived about 35 years ago. Same place, same set of everything. His children have grown up and moved out and you know, um, so he's kind of almost back to the way he was as a teenager when he first moved into that place, when he first got married and everything. I drive carefully over the puddles so I don't squash those guys. 
I, you know, I, I just think it must be a really kind of a boring sort of life, you know. Every day for him has been the same for so long now. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. But I don't really think it's all that positive to decide that, you know, this is the phase of life you're in and it, it, that's the phase of life you're going to stay in forever. Because uh, essentially it's not true, you know. That's, uh, that's a definite fact of life, is it? It's absolutely not true. So, a lot of the inspiration from the, for, the, for this video came out of a YouTube I was watching last night. Oh, is the sun going to be too bright? Pretty bright. Nice bright. Can't complain about the sun being bright, for God's sake. Um, so, yeah, I was watching, uh, the channel is called A&E, which I believe is, uh, it, it is a TV channel uh, in the States and Canada. Uh, we don't have one called A&E because to us in UK, A&E means the emergency room. for a hoarder. Uh, yeah, sometimes you watch those videos and it just turns your stomach. But it, it, it seemed to have kept the place clean. But really, it was his wife who was keeping the place clean. That's, that's what was really going on. And she just couldn't get him to give anything up or change anything. And she kind of, she was almost like his mother, as much as a wife. And at times, he would just act like a very small child. And it's because this lady had always let him have his own way and not argued. Uh, that it, it had held them both back, you know. She couldn't have the family round, her children had left uh, as soon as they were old enough to get away from the place. I think about sort of 15 years old, you know, they had to go into care or something, but they had to get away. And uh, she'd gone on for I don't know how long, many, many years. The, these guys were sort of late middle age. So she'd gone on for many years just putting up with the craziness and so that had really shrunk her as an individual, shrunk her world, shrunk her ability to do things and the range of things she could actually have ever done. All of that had shrunk and contracted and just got, she'd lived in a smaller and smaller world and so did this guy, he, he would only talk to her on the phone in the house because he liked to hide in his gaming room which was uh, equally hoarded up to the roof with toys <laughs> and eventually well you, you know the thing if you've ever watched hoarders if you haven't give it a watch it's kind of i think it's kind of fun oh and by the way i'm uh, i'm sorry about this thing sticking out in the camera there but uh, i don't know i'll have to work something out that is that is just not good but yeah you know the result was that the, the hoarding team came in and the counselors came in and eventually it got resolved but what didn't really ever get resolved in the program was their marriage and I just know that one of these days she's gonna leave the guy it just has to happen they've reached that stage where they were just um, talking to each other with like a veneer of respect but you could tell they just didn't neither of them really approved of the other one and so something's got to change there and I guess they'll split up in the end, that's how it looked to me anyway. And the thing is, if they'd split up many, many years ago, they might have had a completely different life, their children might have had a better life, everything could have been a lot different if they just kind of realised that they were in a phase and done something about it. And it's one of the real hard things about the, the way we have marriage in this world. Uh, it works very well for some people, but you know, others it kind of doesn't. And there is this expectation still, actually, on quite a lot of our young people. Oh, you know, you, you have to get married. That's what people do. You get married, and that's the only way to do it. And because of that, people go into this thing where they they're together and they're happy and. It, Rather than that being a phase, and just, if they saw it as a phase, they could see it as a long phase and maybe go on forever, but 
it's that feeling of trappedness that you know this isn't a phase this is the rest of your life and you've struck your matches now you can't strike them again so you know now you're stuck together <coughs> excuse me now you're stuck together and very much stuck with each other but so much pressure on you know and uh, unless people are really devoted to, to each other and to their children, you know, to, to the whole scenario. The scenario just plays itself out in no time and people get stuck behind with it. Such a shame and uh, you can see these people had never really questioned the horde all that much. I think, well, I think the lady had because she didn't like it, but the man had never really questioned the horde. He didn't really think there was anything wrong. Um, and this team came in and they just sorted it out in about three days, something like that. That's going to be aftercare, I mean, you, you know, can't sort everyone out in three days. That's not how the world works. But, but they moved that phase on for these people and they got these people to understand that the healthy thing to do was to move the phase on. And it was just sorted in absolutely, well, three days, but absolutely no time when you think of how long they've been married and kind of stuff that had gone on in their lives. Nice doggy. So in the end everything got fixed and in the end everything changed. And quite honestly this is the point, you know, it doesn't matter how much we try to hang on to things being a particular way. Life is change, it's a fact. And anyone who's ever studied psychology or even just kind of been to a psychologist would I'm sure tell you that you know change is the nature of life. And if you have no change at all going on in your life, it, it, it becomes unhealthy and it becomes unhappy. And it's just not a good thing, really. Gosh, this camera mount does bounce a bit. So I'm gonna have to do some sticking things to this to make it less bouncy. Not much has changed in this village in all the time I've lived here. I've been here 32 years. Very little has changed. You know, we're just passing that John Jones place there. Um, that is a wonderful shop. It's like a hardware store from the 1950s. And it still totally functions. Uh, the old guy passed away, so I believe he was a, a good guy, actually. Uh, and his son took over and hasn't changed a thing. It is a, it's a run-down, rambling old tiny cottage, and I sort of put a big roof on the front to make it into a builder's yard. And uh, stuff there is cheap, you know. It, it, it's just wonderful. I always go there if I need anything for the house. It hasn't changed at all. But it's very rare you see people kind of just going from one phase to another of their life. I'm not actually changing the big details like that. Hey, there it goes, you know, it, 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 that, that's a model that works and has worked for so long. But it, it looks to me like it'll always keep on working, I hope it does. Or at least I hope it does for my lifetime anyway. triangle sign and the Ukraine flag didn't see any real life cows it's a shame I like to see real life cows but uh, I guess they're on their being milked phase of the day at the moment I guess that's what it is
So I guess the the moral, the lesson as it were, of that whole thing about hoarding and just different phases in life is um, if you're in a phase of your life that isn't working for you, please do try and change it guys, your life is really meant to enjoy, uh, to be enjoyed. And this is one of the kind of two-sided things that comes into spiritualism. Um, on the one hand, we connect to spirit guides who've known us since before we came into this world. <coughs> and any of us with any kind of spiritual belief at all are aware that we're being guided and drawn through this life by forces unseen. Really, but friendly forces, anyway. And they've got our back, you know, they, they look out for us and they always kind of draw us towards the right situations and the right things. But it's very much up to us to change direction if we feel we need to. And you know, that there are going to be times in life when we do need to change direction. And the, uh, the acid test of that really is, you know, does it work for you the way life is at the moment? Does it work for you? You don't have to change your whole life, and maybe there's just one little aspect you'd like to change. Okay, if you remember about a bit over a year ago, um, I had to go into hospital. And I just, you know, I, I haven't changed my whole life by any means. I'm still very much kind of doing the same things I was back then. But I had to slow down a bit. I had to stop worrying about YouTube, for one thing, and uh, I'm really glad I did. Because that's, uh, I feel it's improved the quality of things, you know? <coughs> Excuse me, if you try to make a video every day about the same thing, which is what YouTube wants, then pretty soon you start running out of ideas and, and stuff. Uh, there are people who Maybe I've started watching their channel because I loved what they did and then they've, they've completely changed it and they've got more views that way, but it just seems kind of dull to me. Um, so that, that's been really positive change and the other thing is I walk out on these roads quite a lot. Uh, not far from home at the moment. And uh, yeah, I, I do like to come out and have a walk on these roads. I absolutely love this whole area. And so that's made a, a really big difference actually. I'm just more aware of nature. We kind of notice things in a way that, that we didn't before when we start doing something new. We see it with new eyes. Uh, for example, on this corner, you won't be able to see in the camera sadly. I've tried to pick it up before. But there are 35 windmills in the distance just as you come around that corner. And you can get a pretty good handle on the weather and what kind of weather to expect just by counting them. If you can actually see 35 of them, it's going to be, uh, may not be a beautifully sunny day, but it'll stay clear, you know, the, the, the skies will be clear and there won't be any crazy storms coming in or anything like that. And then just depending on how many windmills you can see it changes. Sometimes I can only see no windmills at all. And, uh, and I know we're in for an absolutely crazy time of storms and goodness knows what else. And wouldn't that be a good change to make if you can, if, if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where there are trees and greenery around. Just going out in that makes such a difference. And that kind of clears my mental hoard. I can't speak for everyone. It, it sort of clears my mental hoard when I do that. And uh, that, that is just such a, a refreshing thing. second in my big pile of compost that I didn't use this summer. I'm going to keep that for next summer. There we go, time for a reading. I really hope you enjoyed that drive in the car. 
As of this moment, I can't find the nice music that used to go with the drives, but uh, I'm working on it. I think I might be able to get hold of it. I think I know where it is. Anyway, time to pick a card uh, or pick two, three, four or five cards. In fact, you could actually pick up to 10 if you really wanted to, because uh, we've got five tarot cards here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. That's how we'll go. Pick one or more of those, maybe pick all five, it's entirely up to you. Let your inner psychic do the picking. One, two, three, four, five. And then with each one of those, we have got an angel card. And I haven't used this deck for a little while, but uh, there you go, it's full of energy now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five from Ask an Angel by Tony Carmine Salerno. So let the reading begin. Which ones did you pick, friends? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're below down there, if you'd like a personal private reading, do get in touch with me at my Gmail address, 35AND83 at gmail.com. That is 35AND83 at gmail.com. It's down there in the description. If you tap where it says more dot dot dot, then you will most certainly find it. We may be joined by a cat. You coming up, puss? Psst, psst. No, she's going for a drink of water. Okay, we'll let her get on with it. But hey, Tinkerbell and Marcy are back in the house again. This is so cool. So on with the reading, card number one. And it's from Tarot in Wonderland with the bunnies. And it is the King of Pentacles. This is pretty good news. The King of Pentacles wants to share his abundance with you. We're in the suit of pentacles. So, of course, that is uh, to do with the earth signs. Uh, of the zodiac so there's a definite hint of some grounding needed here and uh, what could be more grounding than something to eat uh, whenever i go to a spiritualist church to conduct a service uh, i don't eat much during the day it's just kind of the, the way we do it in certainly in the british movement anyway and uh, then at the end of the service to get really grounded for the journey home they usually give you a cup of tea and a biscuit or something it used to be a plate of sandwiches but hey you know life has changed like i was saying that phase moved on some time ago but the king of pentacles has got a hell of a lot more than just a plate of sandwiches here he's got it all going on and uh, he reminds us that it's good to share the abundance that we have in life and I did start off by saying he wants to share his abundance with you. He absolutely does, especially if this is the card you picked. Um, but it's a two-way thing. You know, there's a flow of abundance. And if you share what you have with other people, or maybe put a bit more into a project than you were going to, uh, that's going to help the thing expand and do better than it might have otherwise. And then great things will flow to you. It's like a conveyor belt. You know, if you kind of just don't take anything off it, it'll stop. But as soon as you start taking things off it, it'll start again. A uh, lot like in a supermarket, like in a big store, where you put something on the conveyor belt and it goes along and the sensor stops it uh, just as it gets to the cashier. And then as soon as the cashier picks it up, the next thing comes. That is what the conveyor belt of abundance is like, friends. It really is. So what have the angels to add to that? Nathaniel, and it is passion. I love the colours of this deck, I really do. I like the colours of all my decks. That's kind of one of the main reasons I get them. But uh, a lot of arty activity going on in this card, if you ask me. And you see the three starfish there. They're swimming, uh, almost swimming anyway, uh, towards the heart, which has the big pentagram heart in the middle. So going with the king of pentacles, super abundance is indicated here. It really is. But passion is what it's all about. And the more passion you have about a thing, the more likely you are to actually draw that abundance into your life and actually make it work for you. So there we go. Card number one and card number 1A or card number six, depending on which way you look at it. Let's put that to one side and get into card number two. What will it be? Oh, it is get hold of it it is number 16 and it's the tower the tower of destruction really now then this is quite a frightening sort of a scene here until you really focus in on it and you see the queen there she's a bit shocked but she's not really angry 
and uh, you know there's there's things flying about everywhere it's made a hell of a mess but there's no real harm done some harm done to be quite honest but that's that's the nature of life you cannot make an omelette as they say without cracking eggs and you can't really get anywhere in life unless you're prepared to take a risk and that is so important as well uh, now when the tower of destruction comes in in a reading it does tend to mean big change is just around the corner maybe not a bad change but maybe a change that you'd be a bit sort of afraid to bring about on your own behalf but it's coming one way or another and it's just about moving on really that's simple it's a change of phase in fact and uh, you know there's really nothing to uh, seriously worry about here a lot of stuff has got wrecked here but basically it's a few plates and a table and some bent spoons and things like that so you know a couple of years down the line it'll all be forgotten and everyone will be happy again or at least that's what I'd like to hope. Anyway, Tower of Destruction. So to go with the tower, we have the, ooh, the angel Dokiel, all about balance, really. And this is such a big thing that we miss when the Tower of Destruction stuff happens. It's all about the universe ever constantly trying to bring itself into balance, trying to balance whatever's going on. And this is the answer to the age-old question, you know, why do uh, bad things happen to good people and vice versa? Uh, if there's a loving God, why do, you know, if the universe has got our back, why do these crazy things happen? It's just all about trying to bring us into balance. And the more we hang on to that, the less distressing the whole situ situation is, especially when we've had the Tower of Destruction. Just look how calm and serene this lady is representing Dokio. And she has got the yin and yang there in nice earthy brown colour as well. So another hint towards grounding there, most certainly. And just remember, you know, whatever seems to go wrong, whatever seems to be a problem coming up, it's always there for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. And that reason is the universe coming into balance. So... Thank you, Dokio. Let us move on to card number three. Here we go. Oh, number 10, the Wheel of Fortune. Now, if you picked all five, this is the center card, card number three. So this is what it all pivots on. This is what everything turns on, what everything hangs on. And uh, turning is an appropriate thing to call it because it is the wheel. Uh, neither of these characters knows when they're going to get off. It's just Alice chasing the Mad March hare and uh, having a crazy, crazy time on the Wheel of Fortune really and, and it is a wheel of fortune the wheel of life is definitely a wheel of fortune if you pick this card it's game on there's everything to play for there are lots of playing cards in this scene and we can see nearly all of them there are three or four that are turned away from us and in this deck if you can only see the back of the card that is the unknown getting involved when you can see the front of the card it's telling you that you know so everything is pretty much as it seems so we've got a blend here a balance in fact of uh, what is seen and what is unseen. Both kinds of forces affect us, friends. No getting away from that. And I know a lot of us wish we could get away from that. But it's the Wheel of Fortune. And to go with that, we have Archangel Azrael. And it is Surrender. And that's what you might as well do if you find yourself in the Wheel of Fortune situation. Because there's every chance that you actually get thrown off the Wheel of Fortune and land on your feet in a good place, a happy place to keep moving. Because spirit really does have our back. It really does. But at the same time, you've got to look for the peace in the situation and if you're stuck on the wheel of fortune it's going to be good to meditate on this dove which is ascending through all these chakra looking lights coming up it's almost like it's ascending the tree of life in lots of ways that isn't exactly the image that's intended by the artist here but that is what's really really jumping out at me about the wheel of fortune it's all about the tree of life and where you actually find yourself on the tree of life um being the wheel of fortune, there's no guarantee of, of an easy answer, of a happy resolution. But there is the opportunity to turn it into a happy resolution. To uh, get, you know, uh, the old prayer book used to say, granting them happiness out of their afflictions. And uh, I hope no one's getting any afflictions at this point, but we can't avoid them. I guess some of you are, and I'm sorry if that's the case. But there is a way out, you know, mentally. Just surrender to it and know that it's all about 
everything coming into balance. Balance is really uh, coming up a lot in this reading today. Will it be a part of card number four? That is the question. Well, ooh, the death card. There is definitely a hint of balance here. Death sounds very final, but of course, this isn't a card that means we're all gonna die, uh, or you're gonna die if you picked it. Well, we, we're all gonna die one day, but not for a long time yet. Uh, I, I certainly hope, and I'm pretty sure, actually. Uh, but here, Alice has got the courage to blow out the candle, and so that's, she thinks it's gonna leave her in darkness, but as the candle's gone out, there's this kind of blue moonlighty color coming through, coming in all around her. So there is more light out there than you think there might be, okay? And if you're having a bad time, just kind of, you know, turn the page, blow the candle out, move on to another phase. It's all about phases. That's where the balance really can uh, do its work when we change phases. So don't be afraid to blow that candle out, friends, like Alice has done. Okay card from the angels to go with that guardian angel special message wow now this is I'm, I'm struggling a bit to relate this to the last card but it does go with it somehow it really does and the special message is all about that that very true belief that we have about the angels that uh, you know we're given a task to do in this life we may not know what it is until we've done it but somehow we will accomplish it we really will. And the special message is that there's some information coming into you. If you drew this card, friends, listen to your dreams. It's always good to listen to your dreams, but listen extra closely and extra carefully to your dreams at this time because there is communication coming in from the universe, the divine, from the angels, and uh, they're good angels as well. The angels of light are trying to communicate with you. You coming up, puss? Come and say hello. Yeah, come on then. Come on. Oh. You're not going to come and say hello. People want to see you here. Just a second. Here she is. It's Tinky Wink. And she wants to get out, so I'm going to just let her out a second. Uh, she doesn't want to go out at all now, but hey, what are you going to do? This is the joy of cats, it really is. Okay, so what is the joy of this tarot reading? What is the outcome card? What is card number five? I ask myself and I ask you. It is the Knight of Cups. Right, so we're into the cups, we're into the emotions, the passions in lots of ways, actually. But so uh, the things that really you know, twang our heartstrings, I guess. And uh, not just in that way, you know, emotions are all about enjoying things as well. And here is the Knight of Cups. He enjoys the finer things in life. And uh, he's contemplating his goblet. And no doubt has some wonderful wine in there to drink on horseback. Um, so I guess this is really saying, you know, take some time to appreciate the things that you really feel you can appreciate. And you know, sometimes it's good to take some time to try and appreciate things that either leave you cold or just kind of don't interest you. Because you know, there's something in everything and it, I, I really want to say, this is kind of inspirational that's just come to me with this card. I really, really want to say if you drew this card, Try something you haven't tried before. Take another look at something that didn't appeal to you the last time you looked at it, because I've got all these beautiful colours on my picture here. And the world is full of beautiful colours, and you are going to find something colourful, friends, if you kind of just look beyond the surface. Okay, Knight of Cups, and what have we for? The Angel card. Conflict Resolution. Archangel Raguel. This guy doesn't look too sure, but he does look pretty calm. And he's got a pentagram on there as well. No, it's not. It's a six point. It's a Star of David that he's wearing. So uh, great possibilities and uh, really high up level of angelic assistance coming towards you if you chose this card. And of course, wanting to resolve a conflict is one of those things that it's a bit like I said with the Knight of Cups uh, card that actually has gone with this one in this reading. Um, sometimes you want to look at a side of something you didn't really kind of get a, get a buzz off before and look in, see if you can find something new in it. And in the same way, if there's a conflict going on around you, try and see the other po person's point of view. That is going to make one hell of a difference, friends. That is really going to change things in such a positive way. And uh, just make things better, really. 
And uh, that seems to be the nature of this reading, really. It, it's come out very happily about phases. I hadn't pulled any of the cards before I did the phases thing in the car. But there we go. I've enjoyed this one. Great to be out on the road again. And that camera mount is wonderful. So I will find the music and we'll do some kind of nice meditative country drives in the, in, in the coming days. I'm going to try not to leave it a whole week. I'm, I'm really lazy leaving it a whole week, aren't I? But there you go. There is today's reading, friends. Do let me know in the comments what you thought about it, you know, what you felt, what you enjoyed about it, what you didn't enjoy about it, what cards did you pick. Always, always good to know that. If you'd like a private reading, do give me a shout. We can meet up on Zoom or Instagram or Facebook Messenger. Uh, I wonder how much longer Facebook and Instagram will be around. Everything's changing at the moment, but it's still there now, okay? And of course, we can do it on Zoom. Maybe we could even do it on Skype. I think I've blow the cobwebs off Skype. I think I've still got that in my phone somewhere. Uh, so if you'd like a private reading, get in touch and we will work something out. Uh, also available at the moment, uh, birth charts, natal charts. And there isn't such a long waiting list for them. They can be a great thing, a gift to give a loved one or a friend. If you happen to know their time, date and place of birth, the time isn't absolutely essential. I can do a sunrise chart, which is, uh, you know, very, very accurate and, and Almost, I could almost say precise, but for real precision, it's good if you know your time of birth as well as the date and the place. And then basically you get a chart and another chart so you can interpret the chart from that and a long list of very detailed uh, precise explanations of every planetary alignment, what it means for you. Not just the planets, the asteroids as well. I've got a 24-hour service on them at the moment. Might get trickier as we get further towards the festive season and all of that stuff starts to unfold. But for the moment, they are most definitely available. So drop me an email, 35and83 at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you and we will sort something out. Meanwhile, I think it's time to let you guys sort yourselves out. Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it if you stayed right through to the end, actually, because uh, this is not not been the shortest video in the world but I think it has been full of meaning for everyone who is drawn to it and these readings are for you when you're drawn to them whenever you're drawn to watch the video that's the time for you to have that reading for you to pick that card so friends I'll see you again in a future video meanwhile take good care of yourselves don't forget to like don't forget to hit the old subscribe button that helps no end and I'll see you again in a future video love and light blessings and peace <laughs>